Promising Friends Series 9 first aired on UK television on the 4th of September 2005, with the series finishing on the 25th of November the same year. The series was narrated once again by Michael Angeles. All 26 episodes were produced by Simon Spencer and directed by Steve Asquith. This was the first series since Series 7 to introduce new characters and gave us the reintroduction of the narrow gauge engines aside from Sir Handel, Duke and Bertram. Yes, you all know my feelings on Bertram. It was also the first series where the narrator tells you the title of the episode, which would be beneficial for children with visual impairments, so I think that was a progressive step. While it's clear the quality of the show has declined compared to the classic era, I have to say that I wasn't as bummed out by series 9 as I thought it was going to be. Sadly, there aren't as many good episodes as before, but they aren't entirely lacking in entertainment. Lowering my expectations due to all the negativity towards the hit era has probably paid a part in how I digest these episodes, but there are a few gems in series 9. Sadly, they do fill me with a tinge of regret regarding untapped potential, but I'll get into that later. These are my top 10 best episodes from Thomas and Friends series 9. Once again, these are my own personal opinions, and no doubt your list will be different from mine. That's what makes the Thomas fandom so unique. And please let me know in the comments what your favourite episodes are. All I ask is that you be respectful and above all, enjoy the video. Okay, let's dive in. Number 10. Thomas's Milkshake Muddle Written by Mark Seal, Thomas is sent to get ingredients for cake and ice cream for a summer party, but almost ruins it by rushing around too much. We have the first sighting of Molly as a background character and the resolution to the story was quite inventive by hit era standards. I don't like how Emily provokes Thomas into racing when he knows he shouldn't and Emily doesn't receive any consequences for her actions. Maybe that was a prophecy about how influencers shape modern society on YouTube. This is not a great episode, but scrapes into the top 10 for its inventive ending. Number 9. Thomas and the Toy Shop Written by James Mason, Thomas takes some toys to the Knapford Toy Shop as well as children from school but needs Henry's assistance because the train is too heavy. The winter settings are a downgrade from the classic mitten sets as I mentioned previously, but they're not horrible. It's the first time we see Cranky since series 7, and Annie and Clarewell have a whole two lines in the episode. Wow! Henry is, once again, a plot point to help Thomas learn a lesson, but at least he was there. The story could have been better if it was about Henry and Emily instead, as she's still new to the Steam team and has more lessons to learn than Thomas does. The episode was okay by the low expectations that I've set for this series. Number 8. Henry and the Flagpole Written by Paul Larson, Henry fears its favourite tree will be cut down to provide a flagpole for Callan Castle. I know it's another episode where Henry is obsessed with the forest and with trees, but that's a thing now and it's been well established so I'll give the writers a pass on that. Henry does go all eco-warrior in this episode to save the big pine tree, but at least he gets punished for his actions by the Fat Controller, something that didn't happen to Emily for antagonising Thomas. It was nice to see characters like Salty and Trevor again. The bagpipe incidental music was lovely. And being Scottish, it's always nice to see the Scotland flag flying in any show. I know it's not a lot of positives, but it's more positives than the last two entries. With the quality dipping again in this series, I'll take anything I can get. Number 7. The Magic Lamp Written by Sharon Miller, Peter Sam goes looking for a magic lamp after Scar Lowy tells him a story of Proteus. Who's Proteus? Normally when there's a spooky story being told to the other engines, it's a nameless, faceless engine who can be relatable to any other engine. In this case, we get a name, and a slight visual, and that fascinates me. I want to find out more about Proteus. How does Scar Lowy know Proteus? Where did he come from? What did he do? Why is he no longer around? Someone in the fandom should really come up with a Proteus backstory. Or, if you've already done so, please let me know. There are some issues with the story, like Peter Sam being an arrogant little brat when this is not his character, and the rhyming speech that comes out of nowhere. Something I know will be prominent in the upcoming Sharon Miller era. However, the nighttime settings were much better than previous episodes, especially the use of fog effects. The story wasn't as predictable as other episodes in this series, and there was a cameo by Harold the Helicopter, which is always nice to see. Number 6. Keeping up with James Written by Abby Grant, James's impatience with Edward proves to be disastrous. 
As many of you know, I think James isn't the greatest character in Thomas and Friends. I've even received death threats about my opinion on that, so I know feelings are strong on it. I do understand his appeal, but his arrogance and vanity are negative personality traits to pass on to young people. Especially speaking as someone who was bullied by people with those personality traits, and more so than the father of twin boys. I never want my children to be like that. It's okay to have an ego, it's okay to have self-confidence, but not to the extent where you belittle and hurt other people's feelings as a result. The best episodes with James are ones where he starts off in one place, and through certain circumstances learns a lesson and grows as a character. And this is one of those episodes. Having James paired up with a character like Edward is good because, as I've said before, when two characters are opposites it brings a natural conflict. We saw in series 2 how well they played off each other in Old Iron. While I don't like how Edward is being portrayed compared to the classic era, he still helps James learn the lesson he needs to learn in this episode. I was glad Edward was awarded the special train, but if this was the classic era I don't think James would have been allowed to be Edward's back engine. I do understand it was to show the audience that James had learned a lesson. Good work, Abby Grant. Number 5. Molly's Special Special Written by Paul Larson, Thomas helps the new engine named Molly to make her empty trucks look more important than Gordon's Express. Why does Thomas always have to be the one to meet the new engines? Let him get to know someone else on the railway for a change. A character like Henry or Edward would have been a more natural fit for Molly's personality. I do like Molly's design, but maybe they could have toned down the yellow livery a couple of shades. It made the model look cheap, and we all know that those models were anything but cheap. The writers could have done so much more with Molly in this episode, instead of having Molly talk to Thomas about her encounter with Emily, why didn't they show the interaction? We would have given Molly more screen time, and we would have got to know her as a character, especially how she deals with conflict. Even though it's called Molly's Special Special, it's still a Thomas heavy episode and mainly about Thomas trying to help Molly instead of Molly solving her own problem and learning a lesson from any mistakes she might have made. Again, that could have been character development and growth. The episode shows the clique mentality that's developed within the Steam Team and while it's not nice to see, it's something you do need to be aware of in real life, especially going into school or work environments. I know it seems like I'm berating the episode a bit, but the fact that it's made me think of all these things shows that the episode did have an impact. I enjoyed the episode, but there was untapped potential which could have made it so much better. Number 4. Respect for Gordon Written by James Mason, Gordon begins bossing the others about until he crashes into some jam tankers. While I was making my notes for this episode, Unlucky Tug dropped his video about why this was the best episode of the hit era. While he did make some good points, and I agreed with a couple of them, in my eyes this is not the best episode of the hit era, at least as far as I've watched up to this point. It's a good episode and the story is solid, however I think it could have been better with some adjustments. For starters, bed in the issue with Gordon's rattling in an earlier episode, like Henry's coal problem in series 1, and maybe half the engines remind him of his incident and squeak rattle and roll to make Gordon feel more self-conscious. It would give Gordon more justification to act the way that he does later on in the episode. Next, redo the crash sequence. Remove the slow motion and don't spray jam on him like you're using a squirt gun. Show the damage Gordon suffers in the crash like you would have done in the previous series so we feel his humiliation and his pain. Finally, flesh out the ending of his character arc. The finale of the episode is good, but it could have been better if it was explored in its own 7 minute episode as the concluding story of a two part arc. Start the second part by showing how Henry and Emily both struggle pulling the express. In series 8, Henry wished to never pull passengers again. How would he have coped being thrust back into a situation like that? I know we had an episode in series 8 about Emily wanting to be as good as Gordon, but that could be another chance for exploration of character development. Show how nights without Gordon in the shed affect the engines, specifically Thomas and Percy, feel safer with Gordon being there. How would that impact on their work the next day? These problems could prompt Edward into visiting Gordon at the works to see how his repairs are going, and we see Gordon feeling sorry for himself. Gordon wasn't feeling respected before, so now he wouldn't be feeling really useful either. Edward could help Gordon realise the error of his ways while also telling him how much he's missed by the Steam Team. And it would be in character for Edward, 
as he's meant to be wise and experienced, and that's why he was such a good foil for Gordon in the classic era and the Railway series books. Finally, we would have Gordon's return, and the scene at the end with them all in the sheds could still be used. But with these changes, it would give it greater gravitas. That's what could have been, but what we got was still pretty good. Number 3. Thomas's Day Off Written by Sharon Miller, Dennis the New Diesel acts lazy and gets Thomas to do all his work. Isn't it ironic that everyone in the fandom berates the Sharon Miller era, yet this episode is one of the best of Series 9? I haven't seen the Sharon Miller era, I've only seen a smattering of episodes here and there. But this episode does give me a little bit of hope. The character of Dennis was someone who, like other engines in this series, had potential and should have had a more prominent role. Dennis is one of two new characters who had a story arc in, the, in their episode. He started off as lazy and manipulative, got his comeuppance as a result of his negative behaviour and learned his lesson by the episode's end. It was a good starting point for his character and I only wish more episodes were devoted to his evolution as the show progressed. I know that Dennis was meant to come back later on down the line with the higher powers deciding against it and it's sad that they didn't act on that opportunity. I just wish that Thomas wasn't involved in this episode. It's called Thomas's Day Off. So let Thomas have a day off. Get another engine like Percy or Toby to be the lead instead. Number 2. Duncan and the Old Mine. Written by James Mason, Duncan, looking for an adventure, ventures into a disused mine. We all know that the narrow gauge engine's personalities were very different to how they were in the classic era and I'll talk more about this in my top 10 worst episodes. So, how ironic is it that the character whose personality traits they didn't mess with had one of the best episodes in the series? There weren't any special effects, no elaborate crash sequences or oversaturation of characters. Just an engaging story about an engine who wants an adventure, gets more than he bargained for and uses his initiative and smart thinking to get out of a tricky situation. Yes, finding the coal in the mine was a coincidence, but it didn't take away from the overall performance of the episode. The classic example of less is more working for the show rather than against it. And the number one best episode of Thomas and Friends Series 9 is Mighty Mac. Written by Paul Larson, Mighty Mac, an engine with two faces, has a problem deciding where to go. The narrow gauge engines return, we have the introduction of a new character, and Mr. Percival, aka the Thin Controller, makes his debut. Two out of the three points I just raised were issues that fans had about Series 8, so we have to give the writers credit for addressing this and trying to rectify it. Having the Thin Controller back to oversee the narrow gauge engines was something the fans were wanting from Series 4. Yes, it took a while, but better late than never. Mighty Mac was an interesting character. The idea of a double-ended engine was a fascinating concept with great potential for future stories. I understand some people's points that it's another twin engine's premise, like Bill and Ben or Donald and Douglas. But unlike these engines, one can always steam away if they don't want to be around the other. Mighty Mac are like Siamese twins of the engine world, and they don't have that option. So how would they cope in a situation like that? We also never saw how they would interact with the other narrow gauge engines. Fear Mighty Mac up with someone like Duncan could have created a great conflict. Especially if one of the engines liked Duncan and the other one didn't. I like the incidental music for the narrow gauge engines and Angelese's voice work for both Mighty and Mac showed that there was still life in the old dog yet. The episode felt fresh, inventive and showed what the writers could do if they took a chance and tried something different. Once again, it's just a shame that the potential for this character was never fully realised. So that's my best episodes from Thomas and Friends Series 9. What are your best episodes from this series? If you like what you hear, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified about my latest videos. Until next time, take care, stay safe. Bye bye.